I've got today's activity sheet in the thank you for uh, uh, recording and Allison welcome here's today's activity sheet um, that you can access and JT just added the Blackboard Collaborate changes thank you for doing that I will tell you that having resource folks other moderators to help jump in sure saves me a lot of time and again everybody how do you do that when you don't have a TA or PA to help you do that or a co-teacher Go ahead, tell me how you do it, how you do it. You tell everyone to be patient. <laughs> well, you tell everyone to be patient and you, you ask, instruct, or ask the students to support each other in the chat. Exactly, Angela, you get the students to do that. That way you are empowering them to take a little bit more charge of teaching and learning for the class and they become uh, responsible in some ways for helping each other, which builds that trust and that um, cohort style learning. All right. So, I've got a, a quick thing to say about today's session. Today's session, um, Karen Skiba and I were talking earlier when we were planning this, and today's session was uh, going to be folks showcasing what their course is all about and some of the, uh, you know, showing the front page and saying, I designed it this way or that way or the other way. Um, but I fell off the ball, I did not get on the ball, I fell behind the ball, I did not do what I wanted to do and get people to actually come in ready to present and share that. So I am relying on you all, 21 participants, to jump in if you have a course that you are using and you're like, you know what, I've got this one thing that is really good. The students respond to it, it works for me, it can be an easy thing, it can be a tricky thing. Um, I would encourage you to please get it up and ready and raise your hand and share it when the time comes. Um, and I will, we will make you a moderator and you can share that screen and that way you'll have the experience of doing that as well. Um, and you can share out some cool trick that you can um, do. And Karen Skiba just posted Where'd you post that? I just posted it at the bottom. Uh, oh, I've been bottom searching for a, a long time for course examples. So there's three examples of past Teach Online participants who kindly agreed to let us uh, peruse. Or, you know, just keep in mind they were posted a while ago, so some of their links may not work, but they're good examples. And I, I also searched all over the place for other Canvas examples from other universities and found some good ones there, but you might have additional ones. But I was looking for a wide array of example so so that's a, a good start great so we have those and you know if you want to dig into that you can look at those Karen Spader mentions also that there's canvas commons which has an almost overwhelming amount of um, courses that you can look at for the design of theirs um, unfortunately they often do not come with the sort of let's discuss why I made that decision um, so in today's activity sheet, we have a, a, a chart that looks a little bit different. It's for you to fill out, uh, and it's about course decisions. So I filled out the first one. Um, for example, JT and I were talking about, let's have some silence today in this online session, or let's do a pair, think, pair, share. And I was like, well, I don't know how to do a think, pair, share in Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. Do I have you like alphabetically pair off? But then, you know, what if you're the thing, do you, do you pair off with the person above you or below you? It just, it becomes kind of tricky. So um, that's the question that I have. How do I structure the logistics to do think, pair, share in a synchronous remote instruction? Um, or do a silent reflection? Because I know from my own experience, if I'm online with somebody and they say, okay, be quiet and think about something for five minutes, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go off in social media, check my email, maybe go refill my coffee. You know, I'm, I'm, how do you hold me accountable? How do you hold your students accountable? Um, so today is going to be a little bit about uh, what course decisions that you've made that work well. What course decisions would you like to make or do and how do you do that? Um, and we're going to learn about that. And if we have ideas that you want to share, we will upgrade that uh, up to a moderator and have you share that. So, all good? 
I'd like to also point out that you could raise your hand with the icon of the person with the hand raised. Um, if you want to jump in at any time during the session, that's great um, to raise a, a point or ask a question, etc. Or use and or use the chat on the side to do the same. Um, and we've got great moderators who can jump in and answer those questions. I also, as I'm looking through the participant list, I know that there are some really good question, um, folks who have insight and answers to probably a lot of different questions that you have. All right, and JT's got one already on that. So good. Okay, so a few questions that I'm going to, um, well, let me open it up right away and say, are there any questions that people have that you want us to talk about? If so, add them to the activity sheet um, or raise your hand and, and do so right now. And unmute yourself then to do that. Yeah, JT. So I really want to, I guess maybe I'm just a very stubborn person, but I really want to drill into this think, pair, share, and why, what's challenging about it? I mean, you know, you have, let's say, we have a room full of 24 people, um, mm -hmm. and there was a question actually there on the activity sheet about, you know, um, keeping participants on task during that silent reflection thing, uh, or that silent reflection portion, but I just kind of want to, want to hear your reticence or what is the, the obstacle for you as an instructor with doing a think pair share in the online space, which is something we did in an active teaching lab in person. Right. So for in you, person, what is... In person, it's easy to do it, right? Because you turn to the person to the left. Now, who is to the left of you right now? My coffee cup. <laughs> right. So I, I don't understand how, like, how do you logistically pair up when you have um, online space. And Karen, you've probably already figured this out because you've been teaching online for so long. Go ahead. Well, just in, if you want to do it via Blackboard Ultra, it depends if you're doing it synchronously or asynchronously, but in here you have up to 20 groups. So you could, uh, um, I was trying to figure that out for my thing tomorrow. I wanted to do a pair share, but I could only do up to 20 groups. So some of okay. them would be in three. So you can do, uh, you know, instead of pair, try <laughs> or whatever, yeah. depending on, but if you have a small group, you could do more. So you could do pair share synchronously. Um, and I haven't tried it asynchronously. Karen, have you tried it asynchronously in Canvas, uh, any kind of pair share? I, I wouldn't say necessarily, um, but I guess in some respects, small group discussions are that. Uh, you know, you think about your initial post and then you share it and you engage in conversation with your small group. Um, of course, I think, as you already pointed out, Karen, the, the word pair is what we get hung up on. Um, right. Although it's the phrasing works, it's nice and brief and concise, but uh, it's really about thinking and sharing. Uh, the pairing part is only, you know, a word to fit in and make it flow better. <laughs> But yeah, yeah small so, groups. So maybe then, yeah, you should just say small group, big group. You know, think and then, small group, big group, and then go on from there. So if you have 40 students, you can just set it up, the groups to um, break up into groups of two or, and just. Well, you can, I mean, you can break them up, right? Right. You just say, I want groups of three people. And then I was just sort of thinking um, for the participant who wrote, you know, um, how do I keep individuals on task? And this is something that came up, uh, it was you. One of the things I was thinking of, it actually came from our discussion about discussions and assigning a role um, to someone who is in that small group chat to sort of synthesize that and publish that as, or, or submit that as a reflection piece, just so that you're not going back and forth between 40 different groups of students um, and then put that in a discussion forum or somewhere else um, just to sort of memorialize um, that mm -hmm. student experience. And Karen, Karen Skibba did this last week in the Teach Online at UW course where she had the groups fill out a uh, Google slide. So she said group one fill out slide, you know, group one slide and group two fill out group two slide and so on. Um, and that way the student, uh, the participants could add graphics, they could add, you know, whatever they wanted to, to, to report out and it was saved there. 
So we yeah, can add their the names too. Yeah. And giving their names so you can keep track as an instructor too, which is nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So good. So those are the kinds of things that we want to talk about today. And we're going to break, speaking of breaking into groups, we're going to break you all into groups. Um, and we have 819. So let's, should we do groups? Group sizes? What do you, what do people think? Uh, we're going to give a couple of quick questions here that I will take and post in to sort of focus your what what, I, what we want you to think about here. Um, four groups will give us one group of five and three groups of four. That sounds good. And four. So there are the four questions. Um, and it's basically a reflection on your course this uh either this summer, if you're teaching this summer, what's what, what's going well or what's not going well and why. Um, and what assessments worked or didn't work. And then what are your students, um, or what are you learning from your students as far as getting feedback from them? And how will that change uh, what you wanna do in the future? So hopefully these questions will get you thinking about um, the, the kinds of, uh, that'll help us focus our discussion um, today. Shall we break up into group and let's take 10 minutes? Right. Let's do 12 minutes and come back at 1.30. Does that sound all right? Okay. I'm leaving you in the main room, John. All right. I'll stay in the main room. Okay. Here we go.